Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Lagaya Figueres, the food and dining editor for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Today we are at uh, Twisted Soul Cookhouse and Pours. It's a restaurant uh, in Atlanta's uh, west side in uh, West Midtown. The location is at 1133 Huff Road and it is in the Apex Complex. Uh, with me here today are three women that many of you uh, probably already know. Uh, to my immediate left is Deborah Van Treese. She is the chef owner of uh, Twisted Soul. Uh, in between her is uh, Jennifer Hill Booker. She is a professional chef, a cookbook author, actually two cookbooks. Uh, the first is Field Peas to Foie Gras, and her newest cookbook, Dinner Deja Vu. And uh, far over there on the, the end of the table is Tiffany Bar. Barrier. I always want to be Perrier, Barrier. No one knows it right, it's okay. Okay. Uh, she, uh, folks know her as a mixologist around Atlanta, um, but also the drinking coach, and we can find information about her at thedrinkingcoach.com. The reason that I'm with these ladies today is because the three of them have joined forces uh, for a special event series called uh, Cast Iron Chronicles. We're going to talk a little bit about, about that today uh, and understand. Um, what they're going to be doing. Two of the events are coming up immediately, uh, one, in January, one in December, one in January, and it culminates to a trip to the Beard House in New York City. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about what Cast Iron Chronicles is, and we're going to tell them how they can participate. Okay. So Deborah, since this is your restaurant, we'll okay. let you go okay. first. What the heck is Cast Iron Chronicles? <laughs> uh, Cast, Iron, look, Cast Iron Chronicles um, is kind of a collaborative effort between the three of us. Um, that actually got started as the result of an interview that we all did separately. Mm -hmm. um, once we read the interview, we all kind of got on the same page and were just thinking, you know, what would happen if we actually collaborated to do some things together, to okay. tell our story, because the stories are similar. I think I had met Jennifer before, I never met Tiffany, we okay. all knew of each other, okay. you know, but to actually put us together and let us do what we do collectively. Um, we felt like it would be powerful, it would be epic, and we could get the attention that possibly we can't get individually. Okay. You know, so there was strength in the numbers, and we wanted to move forward with that. Um, the ultimate thing for us is that we will culminate with this, uh, what we thought, in uh, February at the James Beard House. But as we have continued the conversation amongst ourselves, we are seeing more and more of a need for African American females in the culinary industry to join hands and to collectively talk about experiences that we have had and share those experiences with each other with the hopes that in the future those who come after us, you know, maybe we can pave the way so it's an easier trip for them to go through this journey. Okay. So the first event that's coming up, it's on December fourth. It's called Cocktails Cuisine and Conversation. Uh, an open panel discussion with cocktails, um, and you are describing it as discussing the journey of the industry's female trailblazers. Certainly, the three of you are trailblazers, um, and the challenges that you face. Uh, folks can get tickets. It's on December 4th from 6.30 to 9.30. It's here at Twisted Soul. Uh, tickets are $125, and we can buy them on uh, culinarylocal.com. Yes. So tell us a little bit, how about we um, take the conversation to you, Jennifer. Okay. What's going to happen on December 4th? Oh, so um, we have some surprises okay. in store for our guests. Uh, the main thing, really, is, of course, we have the cuisine. And we were talking a little bit about that. Um, Deborah's an excellent chef. She says I'm an excellent chef. I accept that. <laughs> uh, I've Tess, tasted your food. You're an excellent yes. chef. She's an excellent mixologist. So we have the food down pat. Okay. So let's talk about um, the conversation. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the conversation around food. Like what is your food memory? What does this mean to you? How do you feel about it? Um, but we're also going to talk individually and as a collective about our journey. So okay. that conversation of what it is to be a woman, a black woman in particular, in this industry. Uh -huh. And I call myself a reluctant trailblazer. Um, because you do it, it's, just, uh, it's my passion, it's what I want to do, it's what I feel I'm here to do. I'm not necessarily always excited to be the first one to maybe do it. Um, but I am, and so that's fine. And uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about mentors, or lack thereof, for women in professional kitchens. Okay. And um, as 
black women in kitchens, like my mentors are all men, culinary, you know, mentors, which is kind of a shame. But we'll have that conversation as well. Okay, so, and we're going to talk a little bit about mentors. Oh, yeah. um, uh, in a few minutes. If you're just joining us, I'm Lagaya Figueres, the food and dining editor at the AJC. Today we're here at Twisted Soul. It's a restaurant in uh, West Midtown that is owned and operated by uh, Chef Deborah Van Tries here sitting to my left. Um, the three, the other two women here are um, uh, Chef Jennifer Hill Booker and also mixologist Tiffany um, <laughs> Barrier. <laughs> The reason we're here is because these three women are part of an event series that they created called Cast Iron Chronicles. The first event we just found out about is coming up on December 4th. Um, the next event, and this is what I wanted to, to have you discuss a little bit, is on January 15th and it's called Journey to the Beard House. So you're going to prepare us a little bit for this multi-course dinner. Um, so the, uh, if, if the first event on December 4th is a little bit talking about industry female trailblazers, it sounds like this dinner on uh, January 15th, which they'll also be able to buy tickets at culinary.com, is about soul food and a little bit of exploring soul food, which seems to be the other component to this Cast Iron Chronicles, if I'm not correct? Sure. Okay, so tell us a little bit, Tiffany. The other side of the food side, it's my side, you know, I don't hang out in the kitchen, I hang out in the so okay. um, I always say there's not a party without a cocktail, and there's never dinner without a beverage. Okay. And food and you got beverage. something here right in front of you? I, I, <laughs> that's, everyone knows me for that. I, I will always have a beverage, and it's something that I like to, you know, kind of break away. Some people get afraid to drink or get nervous to um, over drink, and you should never, over, of course, over consume. But having a proper quality, balanced cocktail is where I come in. And so growing up in the South, you know, we had all, you know, all of everything, all the proteins and all the vegetables, you know, the gravies and the sauces and the bread, but we also had a corner of alcohol. So um, soul food to me is just a comfort zone. Um, and, and, and beverage does that for me and has done to my family for years. And so being on this side of the industry as a professional, <laughs> It's kind of a cool thing to be able to expound my energy, my history, um, my lushness, I'll say, um, my, my enjoyment of alcohol, and, and to make it a comfortable conversation to pair, you know, proper cocktails with, you know, proper food. Right. And uh, if any of you who are watching have questions, go ahead, feel free to um, put those in the uh, comments, and we're happy to answer those questions. But I'm going to start off with um, a first question, and that is your <coughs> professional journey to where you are today. Um, I think that when I think about your bio in particular, Jennifer, mm -hmm. uh, you talk about that it hasn't been necessarily this linear right. trajectory. Right. And, um, and about when I think about your path, and maybe some people don't know that you're a former flight attendant, correct? Yes. Um, you've lived abroad. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So can you talk to us a little bit about your, you know, well, in a quick snippet, the, your road <coughs> to where you are? Uh. A lot of folks think, okay, well, I'm going to go to culinary school, and then I'm going to I'm going to stop somewhere. I'm going to get my training here, and then as if there is some direct ladder from here to here, and that doesn't always the case. So talk to us about um. No, I think um the road for everyone is going to be different, and that's that's what it's supposed to be. Um, you know, my journey is propelled by faith being stronger than fear. Um, I originally uh, decided to go into the culinary industry because as a flight attendant, we went on strike. Um, my livelihood was left in the control of someone else and that was not a good feeling as a single parent to be in. Um, so I thought, well, let me take control over this and you know, I cook really well. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to do this, so I'll go to culinary school. Um, I think when I went to culinary school, it actually was a little bit different. I'm sorry, I got a lemon. Um, it was a little bit different um, in that um, all of the things that I'm faced with now, actually, either they weren't there or I was blind to them. Okay. Um, you know, I got out of school, I did well in school, I did well here, I did well there, and, you know, I was on this path. Um, I didn't think about who else was with me uh, because I was alone and I never worried about that because I just thought everybody was mm -hmm. alone. I'd never worked in culinary mm -hmm. so I didn't know the good old boy thing that was happening. Um, someone taught me that actually in culinary mm -hmm. school. 
And I noticed it, but it wasn't long before I made the decision that I was going to do this on my own anyway. Right. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a, a single child, Sometimes only child, and mm-hmm. I kind of did this the only way I knew how, which was pretty much by myself. Um, and for folks who don't know, so your your first business was actually more a, um, a catering company, it is was, that correct? I originally had a small restaurant with the idea of catering, all of them just catering. Um, they wanted storefront, so I put together a little party and opened up a restaurant uh, with chairs I found on the street, and the restaurant did well. Um, so what happened, though, it was so small, but it was a great marketing opportunity for the catering. For, for me, catering became the better route for me to go mm-hmm. because I did have a small child, and I was in more control of my time and how it was spent. Mm-hmm. Um, doing catering as opposed to the all-encompassing restaurant work. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's what I went with for years. Catering. Right. <laughs> right. And then, then you shifted into a restaurant. Now we're on the second iteration of yes. Twisted yes. Soul. It wasn't yes. always here. It opened a couple years ago, and right. since. Uh, moved over to, to this location. Exactly. And, exactly. and actually, when I think about it, all three of you are business owners, and mm-hmm. so I know that you come with um, a great deal of learned knowledge over time. I'm sure Trial and error. Yeah. Trial and error. Completely. So, um, and when I compare you, for example, to, mm-hmm. to you, Jennifer, you are a personal chef yes. and cookbook author, so your path has been a little bit different. Um, can you sure. tell our uh, viewers a little bit about your, your yeah, journey? And, yeah, we're talking about the journey now in, in culinary school, and I always wanted to go. Like, that was my focus, and my parents insisted. I get my undergraduate, and then as my b- father put it, then I don't care what you do. So, you know, graduated, got my undergrad, and started culinary school. But as a woman in the industry, I don't care if you're black, white, green, or purple, if you're the primary caregiver in your home, chances are your path is not going to be restaurant, hotline, sous chef, chef, restaurant owner. So it's going to be kind of more of a a, a curved uh, trail. And for me, it was getting married, working in the industry, then having children and working in the industry. And so being a personal chef allowed me to raise a family, be a wife, and still have my passion. That, uh, plus when I did my externship at the homestead, my chef was Austrian. He said, I'll be honest, they're not going to hire you. Uh, We were moving to Germany because you're a woman and you're black. You're not going to work. And I'm like, young and, you know, enthusiastic and naive. What are you talking about? I'm going to work. And I didn't. But I opened my own business, your resident gourmet, and I went into the homes of military families and I cooked with them or for them. And that transitioned into teaching German families how to cook American food. And that's where your resident gourmet was born. And like Deborah, um, as a mom and then as a, a divorced mom of, of two small children, um, I was able to fit my schedule and my work schedule, my real life schedule together. And mm-hmm. so, so that's my trail. Oh, and Tiffany, Tiffany, tell us a little bit um, your story, and in particular, I know folks um, will be familiar with your face one if they've gone to One Flew South before. Yes. You became, you know, <laughs> known for that. And, for, and I'd like to hear, in particular, uh, after you you left that, that's quite a decision, yes. and you went off to to do your own thing. So tell us your journey. And <laughs> uh, it's for one, it's very humbling, and still in, I'm still in shock to be considered a culinarian. Um, bartenders, you know, when I was in college or the bits of college I had, was like, this is a job until you get a real job. Um, so, you know, having a joy and passion for alcohol, it looked like being a party girl or, you know, which I am, we all know that. Um, but it just wasn't taken seriously. And I had friends around that, you know, when they uh, meet people, they get embarrassed to even say their profession. Mm-hmm. And because bartending is looked at as, you know, you're just a bartender. Um, so uh, to be recognized at this level is amazing, but I, I kind of for, for drink. I ended up talking to a professor of mine one day, and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was told, do what you love to do. Mm-hmm. And jokingly, I seriously said, I love to drink. And she's like, get a job. And I'm like, what? And so doing that, um, bartending, you know, at amazing steakhouses and really having a palate for wine and beers and then getting to a certain level, once I got into One Flew South with Chef Dwayne, um, we met and it was like this instantly. We matched. 
um, over a pork chop sandwich and a beer. Um, <laughs> Not a pork chop sandwich. But we were candid and we were honest and he allowed me to be myself and that's what it, I that's when I realized this is what I like to do. I have a personality and I love people, which are two mm -hmm. things that are kind of extinct right now. Um, I like people and I like booze and so I love to break the ice of, you know, conversing and I started you know, tasting all kind of exotic things. I've always been a curious cat, and before you know it, um, I remember Chef Dwayne saying to me, you have a palate, and I'm like, a what? What's a palate? What's a palate? Do I? And, and I knew what the word was, but to experience it as it's your like real profession, because the other places I tended bar were just places to tend bar. Tending bar for a, a chef is a whole other mm, ball game. Yeah. Um, walking into the walk-in, you know, sniffing the herbs, meeting the farmers, you know, uh, meeting the sommelier, sipping beer, you know, really getting into the books and getting to the nooks of why you like what you like. And I thought, this is kind of neat, though, because it's coming supernatural mm -hmm. um, to have a good time, entertain people, and have a cocktail and have right. food. And um, and here we are. Um, here we and, are. And, uh, here we are. I'm a big nerd about it. So of everything that I drink, I love to read. And, and then when I present a cocktail or I want to taste something, I... I always have a fun fact with it. It's kind of like a little mm -hmm. note. Nugget. Hence the drinking coach that happened. <laughs> right. If you're just joining us, I'm with Lagaya Figueres, the food and dining editor at the AJC. We're here today at Twisted Soul. It's a restaurant in um, West Midtown. I'm with three uh, African American women. We uh, are. <laughs> wonderful representatives sure. of the culinary uh, industry. I mean, we could even say hospitality sure. industry. Yeah, why not? Um, the three service. of them are joining forces, and that's why we're here to talk with them um, for an event series called Cast Iron Chronicles. Uh, they're talking about their journey uh, in the profession, um, in particular. Uh, it, well, your your lives both lived as as women, as African American women, and um, and I guess uh, the Southern uh, factor here mm -hmm. you know, um, when we talk about soul food. So there are two events coming up here in Atlanta that they're participating in. Um, they will both be held here at Twisted Soul. One is on December fourth, called Cocktails, Cuisine, and Conversation. The other is a multi-course dinner called Journey to the Beard House. Um, I'm going to get back to some more questions, and if you do have questions, feel free to type those into uh, the comments. But um, let's start again with you. As you mentioned, Dwayne Nutter. Yes. Uh, mentors is a, a, a powerful thing. Uh, you know, when you're when you're establishing a career mm -hmm. and you find a path that you want to go <clears> on, you need to find the people that are going to support you and give you some direction. So talk to me if we can uh, briefly mention some of the key people in your your professional lives. Um. Uh, See what you're saying, like a, a mentor. It's I don't know if well Jennifer has a, you know, your story of you wanted to be that. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to be, um, and still sometimes don't know what I really want to be. Um, and having that support team, it's one thing to have someone support you, but someone to encourage you is a whole nother push. And as a female, you know we have our sensitivity and we have our you know insecurity. Um, so first and foremost, my mom, my mother, and my father are my number one fans, and I'm their number one fan. So just remembering, you know, no matter what I was talking about, whether they knew what I was saying or not, they'd always say, "Well, don't forget home. You know, just don't forget what you know what you did." So that was either hospitality or flavors that reminded me, or or just comfort and laughs and just okay. fun in general. Right. So I'm going to ask you then another kind of related question: Do you feel that there is um, continues to be gender inequality in this industry? If so, um, has it improved since you all began your career? You, the two of you have been in the um, at your careers more than 20 years. Hey, hey, wait, wait. No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I started at like 12. Yeah. Right. yeah. I don't have any Yeah, right now, look now. I, I, right. Yeah, for sure. I, it's in, changing. Uh, it's changing. In my opinion, it's worse. In your, it's um, worse. You know, and maybe it's it, it goes back to because I didn't come from this industry, you know. Um, as a flight attendant, I came from an industry where there was a bunch of women, you know. So once I got mm -hmm. decided to do this, um, to me it was very natural, you know. You cook. I came from a family where women cook. Mm -hmm. So why would it be unnatural for me to cook and get paid for it, you know, if I'm good at it? Um, so. It seems like the problem becomes, once you start getting paid for it, yeah. it becomes a male-dominated industry. 
yeah. that's when it becomes yeah. that job. Can, can you peg anything in specific instances where you think it has become worse? That there is more gender inequality the, now than before? Oh, it's like, I don't even know where to start. I oh. think there's, you know, when, when I first started and the I did open a little restaurant and you know, I was on my little path and, you know, there's food critics that love me and all. And there was, it was not as competitive. Let me put it this way. Yeah. Maybe Atlanta that. was not as big of a food city, but it just was not as competitive. And I feel like with the you know, beginning of celebrity chefism and um, social media, it is important now and oh, it gosh. has become very cutthroat. Okay. Um, you know, so now the men are coming out more in forces. You know, there's the bravado that they walk around awesome. in the kitchen with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you even look at some of the shows that are on TV, you know, and we do emulate a lot of the things we see. You know, you see, you know, the chef, male, with the mouth, and he's controlling the kitchen, and he's controlling people, and he's dominating. And I think a lot of young male chefs are beginning to look at that and think, this That's is what I is. want to be. But only this as a man. This is how I want to be. We men, this is how we are. Mm -hmm. You know, with that in mind, it doesn't leave a lot of room for, you know, we women who may handle things a little differently in our kitchen. Okay. Um, it's kind of, you know, that's not what chefs do. So we can't possibly understand what chefs are about because there's this, you know, boys club, Sean, you know, that we don't belong to. Um, I think I speak for all of us with what we do in, you know, there's often the times where you do walk into the rooms or into the festival and you look around and there is no one who looks like you. Yeah. There is no yeah. female, there is no male, you know, and quite af often there's no African American. Um, you know, it, and it's highlighted now where before, you know, maybe there wasn't any more op as many opportunities for us all to get together. Or, I don't know. You know. It just, you know, for me, I feel there's a difference that in 1998 when I opened, I didn't feel like I did in 20. All right, I'm going to pause for just a second. If you're just joining us, I'm with Aya Figueres, the food and dining editor at the AJC. We're at a restaurant today called Twisted Soul. Um, right here to my left is Deborah Van Trees. She is the uh, chef owner here at the restaurant. Um, in the center is Jennifer Hillbooker. She is a per, uh, personal chef and cookbook author. And at the far end of the table is Tiffany Verrier. She is an mixologist and known also as the drinking coach. The reason I'm with them is because the three women um, have joined forces to um, put on our culinary event series called Cast Iron Chronicles. Uh, some of the topics that we've been discussing today on, within their journey um, is surrounding, uh, posited by your eyes as um, African American females mm -hmm. working in this industry. So I'm going to go back to this question mm -hmm. of follow up, and perhaps um, one of you guys would like Indeed. to answer it. But uh, you know, if you are seeing this inequality in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and you're noting it both as a female and also um, um, uh, as African Americans. What steps do you think need to be um, taken to so that we can see some positive change, uh, where it's a more fair, equitable, um, and more amicable workplace? Right. I think um, what we talked about, um, the lack of maybe mentors, that we can be mentors for young, up-and-coming um, women or African-American women. To understand, everyone needs to understand there is a need for the mentors. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. for sure. For sure, because I think to the kind of expand on what Deborah said about maybe the industry is getting worse as far as that disparity or that division. I used to go and maybe be one of three women, maybe one of three blacks, men and women, and now it's gotten. I'll go to events. I'm like the only one, like the only black woman in the room, and that hadn't been that way in years past. So it's okay. kind of a little, you know, disconcerting. But as far as uh, needing a mentor, we all said, like, Deborah felt she didn't have anyone. The mentor I had, although dear and near to my heart, was a male. Um, Tiff was lucky enough to have both, but I think we definitely need to have mentors for up-and-coming culinarians. That being said, I mean, here I am coming up into the culinary world. We speak about mentors, but it's okay to be a mentee. 
and admire somebody and, and have a favorite Arthur and have a favorite continent or spirit or whatever it is and fall mm -hmm. in love with it and mm -hmm. be inquisitive enough and ask the questions because personalities, you know, is, it's a, for one, it's a job or a passion. And you're like, I want to do this, so I'm going to do it, and then you stop and you go, but how do I do it? Yeah. How do I do it? And me, personally, um, had a, a difficult time at one point just asking the question. You know, I don't know what to do. And no one wants to talk about their weakness, and no one wants to talk yeah. about what they're missing, or I don't, like, I don't know, and I would, you know, kick the door in the kitchen and go, I don't know, like, you're speaking, you know, out of, out of the ordinary, and we were talking about this earlier, as easy as, you know, Chef will describe her water me, I'm like, talk to me about it, and then I go, well, I'm going to talk about an aviation, and, like, and she's like, an what? <laughs> so it's like, you know, bringing down a layman term, so yeah. as much as we need a mentor, Ask it's okay to be a mentee, yeah. and it's okay to, to ask questions and go, can I follow you, can I, you know, I think in, it's interning, or staging, or, you know, pop, like, it's okay to go, I need some help, I don't, I, I, I know I want to do this, I just don't know how to do it, that's a good point. and that's a, that's mm -hmm. a, 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 to me, my strength, because giving your weakness, turns out to be a strength in a long end. I think also that we, you know, are, sometimes we are going now into uncharted territory. Oh, for sure. Oh, um, yeah. I think, sure. you know, back a long time ago, you know, as Jennifer says, we're put in a box and this is what we're going to produce. This is the type of food. Um, once we start elevating all of this, um, where it is, competitive with top chefs and top mixologists and top restaurateurs, mm -hmm. you know, that too has been where we start getting lonely Push back. Yeah. and we start um, intimidating others. It, we are definitely, you said the perfect word, <laughs> intimidating. It's, like, it's, it's we become, you know, like, whoa, right, you, we were fine when we were just doing yeah. pig feet. But when we started elevating, and it's uh, you know a pig foot au gratin with a <laughs> jelly truffle point toast, it's like whoa, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait! You weren't supposed to be able to do that, you know. Or like, the opposite: we yeah. were doing pig feet, and now other chefs now are doing pig feet, chefs. and yeah. for some other reason, their pig feet are better they than think ours. theirs are better than ours, <laughs> you know. So. Um, it's a lot going on. Yeah, these it's days. a lot going I, on. I love it. I, I absolutely, I love it. I love it. You, Deborah, you said the right word, intimidating. I didn't think that we were intimidating as, you know, women. Um, something that I've always respected from my chefs, a lot of my female chefs, is, you know, kind of taking the kitchen back. Um, and you talk to chefs who are amazing, who I absolutely respect, and you ask them a question like, who taught you? And where did you get this from? And they go, my mom, my aunt, my sister, yeah. my cousin, and it's a female. And so I'm like, wow, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oddly, yeah, that I, oddly that I hear stories that are, you know, like that. And on the bar side for us, and this is, you know, no offense to my tattooed, bearded men, who I absolutely love, but when me and my friends walk in, I have, you know, a, a nice group of friends, um, I, I call them the squad, um, that are all professional female bartenders, they're African American, that are working for a, a, amazing establishments from Four Seasons all the way to, you know, uh, Bacardi Brands. They are the top mixologists. And when we walk in the room, they're like, whoa, they get intimidated because for one, we have a dress on. <laughs> and we're being a woman about it, you know, and there's nothing like a, a, a female's touch. And so bringing that into a cocktail scene and putting that finesse and that comfort and that welcome, um, I, I see that, I mean, and they won't tell us that. They're just like, you're going you're gonna to beat us if we're competing, yeah. mm -hmm. if we are on display, if we're going to speak. These guys are like, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and opt out. You guys are going to, you're going you're gonna to murder it. I think we're going to have to stop it there. We could talk all day about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Well, the exciting part is that you're going to be able to continue the discussion. Uh, these three women are part of Cast Iron Chronicles. It's a three-event uh, series. The first one begins next Monday, December yes. 4th, mm -hmm. called Cocktails, Cuisine, and Conversation. Um, uh, you can purchase your tickets at culinarylocal.com. The event is going to be uh, take place here at Twisted Soul. Mm -hmm. The next one is Journey to the Beard House. It's a six-course dinner also held here. Yes. Um, and that is going to take place um, on January 15th. And it culminates actually with uh, your cooking at the Beard House. Mm -hmm.
um, in February of next year. Um, I'm going to thank the three of you so much, Deborah Van Trees, Jennifer Hill Booker, and uh, Tiffany Barrier joining me today. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. your stories. Thank you. And um, we'll look forward to hearing more about um, uh, both the, um, your path as women, mm -hmm. as African American women, and um, this uh, segue of food yes. in, in, in all of your life. And drink as well. And drink as well. <laughs> and drink as well. Thank you, Thank you all very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.